This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk us through this 2023 uh, Flagstaff Mac tent camper. And the model is 206 LTD. Um, so this is kind of a supplemental video. The manufacturer's setup video is really, really, really good. Well done. So you, you will, uh, I think in your packet they give you a link to uh, to that video, which goes through set, setting up, and just just a, just a good video. I'll go into a little bit more detail on some things, and and uh, so the the videos kind of work together, I guess, is what I'm saying. So, okay, um, <clears throat> we're not going to set it up and bring it down because, like I, I said, their their setup video is much better than anything I could do. Now, keep in mind, you get two of these. They'll be under your mattress, but there's two of these bars. And these bars just are low tech. They just go up, go up like that. And then onto the, uh, or over the other, the other post. There's only two of them, so they go kitty corner from each other. Basically what they do, people have a lot, give you a lot of, a lot of uh, different opinions about what they're for. But the thing is, these um, basically just add extra strength to the roof. You know, you're camping in the woods, and uh, so if something was to fall and hit the camper, it's built, built very strong, but if you put one of these in each corner, it'll actually give you some more strength, okay? So it's just a, it's just a, a safety device, or two safety devices, okay? Um, <clears throat> now when it comes to your awning, keep in mind that everything when it comes to the poles, they're all stored in the rafter of this. The rafter is a metal piece on the on the out outer edge of it that runs the, the the width of it, right? So all the poles and everything fold right into there. So it's all self-contained. Okay. Now this uh, rail here accepts the. cooktop that that um, you use for both inside the trailer and outside the trailer. You can use it inside or out, whatever you want. And when it, you're stowing it, see there's another small rail there. It actually hangs on that rail when you're when you're traveling. Um, you can see there's another rail on the back of it, uh, right? And it also hangs on this one to cook the outside. Uh, to connect the gas to it, this is a quick connect here, LP quick connect, and you're just going to connect it to the to the male counterpart on the back of the of the of the grill itself, the cooktop itself, and then of course turn this on, and you're all set. Okay. A lot of people just cook outside with it, so when you're camping, you would keep it out here while you're while you're uh, at the campsite. Um, Let's see what else we have here. Under here, I don't have it under here, but the, there's a half door. Once you remove your, your screen door, there's this half door here. You can see it right on the bed there. It's a travel door. It has a hinge on it with two pins, and, and that will actually... Those two pins, one will go through here, one will go through there, and then that bungee cord will go over the latch. So you stow it back here when you're camping just to get it out of the way. Okay. All right. <coughs> uh, this is your city water hook up here. It's the most common way to get water to the trailer. You're just going to hook the hose on there and you're all set. Now if you're camping someplace without city water, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here. You pre-fill it, and then you use the onboard pump to pump the water. All the plumbing will work as though you have city water, you just be pumping it from the tank. So if you're boondocking and there's no uh, city water hookup, you still can use all the plumbing. Keep in mind that this plug right here, which tucks into here, that's for the air conditioning, so you gotta connect that for the air conditioning to work. Uh, it's best to connect it when the top is down, just because it's easier. But that that gives you the power to the uh, to the air conditioner. Unless if it's not plugged in, you won't get it. The air conditioner will not run. So 
make sure you take care of that. Now, uh, 30 foot, 30 amp power cord right here. And we'll give you a, a 20 amp reducer to reduce it down so you could, you know, let's say plug it in at home or something like that. So we do give you an adapter with it. Alrighty. And of course, under here, you've got your LP tank, and there's your regulator right there. You got a deep cycle marine battery and your power wench. Never run the wench. Or is it winch? <laughs> get, get up, you Let's see. Wench, winch. I think it's actually winch. Okay. Yeah, right there, winch. Okay. So, um, you never run your winch when your when your top is still latched down. There's four latches that hold the top to the to the bottom half of the trailer. Always make sure you open those up before you before you crank that up, or you'll do damage. Um, if you have any kids around, make sure you warn them away from it. Do whatever it takes so they don't they don't fiddle with it. Okay. Um, this right here, that's just a little. Um, that's a hookup for a solar kit right there. If you wanted to get a solar battery charger, this one's made by GoPower. That's all that's for. It. So you could purchase one. Although you do have a solar panel on this one on the roof. So, okay. So up and down. Always make sure <coughs> that all four of these are unlatched. Whoever's in charge of the winch. Uh, is also in charge of the latches. So even if someone tells you that they're they're uh, unlatched, you still have to look yourself to make sure. Okay. So it's a very powerful motor. Okay. So let's see here. Let's look at some more stuff here. This. Oh, let me get in here. Hold on. This right here is the reducer I just told you about to reduce your 30 down to a 20 amp. Okay. Those are your keys. Okay. So, a uh, light switch, fire extinguisher, obviously. This is your solar controller right here. Um, right now, we're getting 0.0, .0 amps from the sun, right? We're uh, we're inside, so we're not converting any electricity from the from the sun to amps. So. Um, <clears throat> If we're outside on a day like today, it's probably, I'm trying to picture the day, it would, it'd probably be about, it, let's, it could be as much as 5, 5 amps or 4.6, whatever, uh, and that's what would display here. That's, those are the amount of amps being stored in your battery. Okay, now if you, let me look here, let me get it back around so we can... Okay, so right now you got 13.7 volts in your system, which is perfect. You're gaining 0.0, .0 amps from the sun. And you also have amp hour storage is at zero. That's because, like I said, that's because we're inside right now. Once you're getting out in the sun, it'll all, it'll, it'll give you read, uh, accurate reading. Um, this other button here changes your battery type. I've already got it set to a... A regular bat wet battery so that's good it's all set there now if it ever says I think FUL and flashes and will not respond it's telling me basically that the battery is totally charged so um, if the battery is totally charged and it can't accept any more uh, any more amps from the Sun it'll just shut the panel off temporarily once the battery the power of the battery drops it'll go right back to the normal normal screen there okay let me fix this real quick. I see it's not on wet. Okay, so I just set it to wet, which is where we're going to leave it, because that's what you have on here. Okay, so that's good now. Um, <clears throat> you have storage here. You can see there's your your um, uh, stabilizer jack crank there. Over here. In a spatula, obviously, you have these two, these two um, uh, thermostats here. They they plug in this end here. Let me see if I can. This piece right here will plug into your into your mattress, and the other end goes into the nearest 110, which will be right here in this case. 
And so it's a, it's, um, it takes the chill out of your mattress, basically. You don't want to look at it as a mat mattress heater. It's more of like a, a warmer than a heater, but it'll just warm it up a little bit. Um, so keep that in mind. You got one of those for each, each of your uh, mattresses. <clears throat> I left this open for you so you can see here. Um, this is your water pump right here. You can see it, it's red, red and orange and black. Um, so keep in mind that uh, when, you're, when you're drawing antifreeze into the system, for example, you'll put a, a hose right on here. You'll change the position of this, of this valve and put the other end of the hose into a gallon of antifreeze and you'll suck it right through the system or pump it through the system. Um, right now it's set up to, when you run the water pump, it'll draw right from your fresh water tank, right? You can see how the, the line or the valve here is parallel with that line. So right now, if you had water in the tank and you turn on the pump, it'll pump water from the tank. Like I was saying before, if you have city water, you don't have to worry about this. This is only if you don't have city water and you, you know, you're boondocking or whatever, okay? So uh, that's your water tank. And um, um, this is your water pump right here. This, this, this thing here is the back of your power converter. I'll show you that in a second. Okay. All right, so let me see if I can get this out of the way a bit here. This is your power converter. This converts AC to DC power. So you can see on this side, you got circuit breakers like you'd see at home, 110 AC, and they're labeled. Then you have, uh, it converts the AC power over to 12 volt DC on this side. You got 12 volt fuses and they're labeled, right? So this is also a battery tender. So it'll sense how much, as long as you're plugged in, it's going to sense how much energy your battery has and needs up front. It'll always keep your battery charged. So when you're plugged in, when you're plugged in this will be charging your battery. When you're pulling down the road, your tow vehicle's alternator will be charging the battery. And the sunlight, the solar panel, will be charging your battery also, depending on the, the conditions outside. So keep that in mind. This is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should be very, uh, or excuse me, it should be green all the time. If it's not green, you want to get it serviced. Um, I'll put it through a self-test for you so you can hear it. LP is good, carbon monoxide coming up. And that, that same tone, but the slower beep, that's telling you that you have a low battery. So it tells you if there's carbon monoxide or LP gas buildup, and also it'll tell you if your battery's low. Okay, this is your water pump here I told you about. Okay, this is a GFCI, obviously. All the plugs in the trailer are wired through a GFCI, even the one on the outside. So if you're using something outside that pops it, you're going to reset it right here. All right. Okay, um, this is the only part of your, of your um, awning that doesn't store in the, inside the rafter. These are two stakes to stake them down if you choose to. You also get some, some lug nut covers if you want to do that. Um, that. This tool is used to set the stops on your, on your lift system. You know, you shouldn't have to touch it. Um, but if it needs to be adjusted, this is what you use. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, you have your 12 volt refrigerator here. Very simple. Okay. This is obviously your other mattress. Um, your poles are in, they're kind of hard to get in, especially the front one. But that'll change as, as it settles into place and stretches out like it should. So it's kind of tough to get in there at first, but <coughs> it will go. Okay. Um, I think that's about it in here. I just want to make sure I'm looking around as I'm talking here. Um, like I said, this is supplemental. So the, um, 
you look at the their setup video, the manufacturer's set it, setup video, and you combine it with this, you got a pretty good idea how everything works, okay? Um, of course, this table folds up and stows on these four cleats here, and you can uh, you can turn the cushions into a, you can you can fold the cushions in a way that it covers the whole platform, so you can turn it into a bed um, when you're tra when you're when you're camping in the, at night, or obviously you're going to have it in the down position when you're traveling. But you can turn it into a bed. Uh, just to use during the nighttime if you want to, so it just gives you more sleeping space. Uh, one last thing here, this is the thermostat for the furnace. Um, I don't know if you can see it very well. The furnace runs on LP. You, this clicks to the left to shut it off. If I was to click it to the right, it'll turn on. Um, it'll, it lights automatically, it'll make three attempts, and it always lights within the first three attempts. So keep that in mind. Um, but it's a uh, it's uh, just an analog thermostat, so, okay? All right, so I think that does it. So I want to thank you for purchasing your camper here at National RV Detroit. Um, one important thing to keep in mind is you want to inspect the seals on your trailer. Every place you see caulk from the factory you want to look at, you know, every 60 days or so, just to, just to keep ahead of things. Um, on the outside, for example, there's a four plastic corner caps. You always want to look at those to make sure there's no cracking or separation where water could get through. Look at the corners on the outside. Any place you see caulk from the factory, look at it make sure it's good and tight. If not, you just buy a tube of, of the correct stuff and fix it. Now the, the thing is, uh, this will use something called Clear Proflex. Don't use caulk from the hardware store, silicone tube or anything like that. That, that will not hold up. You want, in this case, clear ProFlex. Any RV place should have it. So make sure you use that product. But you want to inspect those seals. And if you keep after them, this thing will be bone dry uh, forever. And uh, another important thing is, if you ever have to put this thing together or to put it down wet or damp, the first chance you get when you get home, I mean the first chance, you open it up, set it up, open the windows, just let the wind whistle through it, and... Uh, leave it over a whole day or two days or whatever you could do just make it really dry out if you're not going to be camping for a season or you're only going out once a season um, let's say you're going to go out in the fall well still in the early summer open it up in your yard whatever and just let the wind blow through it it's important you just don't always keep it closed up um, if you do that you'll never have issues um, like I said these things are built to last so just make sure you get you air it out and make sure it's good and dry when you're when you're in a in the in the stowed position and um, so that's important so um, uh, also there is some plumbing so you have to winterize it or you know winterizing is just pumping antifreeze through the system in the before it freezes it's very limited plumbing so it it would take you probably a half a gallon of antifreeze so not much anyway okay all right thank you very much